Welcome to a webinar from the Northwest College Library on APA 7, What You Need to Know. In this webinar, we'll be discussing the differences between APA 6 and APA 7 and highlighting the changes you need to be aware of as Northwest transitions to using APA 7 in the fall of 2020. Today, we'll look at a list of changes that are relevant to student work as a result of APA 7. This includes changes to document formatting, in-text citations, and the reference list. We'll also look at library resources for APA 7, including the Concise Guide to APA Style, the new online APA Guide, an APA online course, and library contact information for assistance with APA. The changes being highlighted in this presentation are specifically relevant to student work. Most of these changes will also apply to professional or published work, but in cases where there is a difference, I will highlight it explicitly so that you are aware in case you're publishing uh, professional work instead of student work. Here are some changes to document formatting in APA 7. There's no longer the need to put a running head on the top of any document, just the page number in the header. This means that the word running head and the abbreviated title do not need to be included on the first page or subsequent pages. There are also new formatting for heading levels three to five. This means if you're using headings in your document, you might have to watch for formatting changes. A document which outlines the specific formatting heading levels is available in our APA guide, which will be demonstrated shortly. Abstract and reference page labels are now considered to be level one headings, meaning if you have an abstract or a references page, you'll write the word abstract or reference bold, centered, and in title case with a capital on both of the words. There are also looser font restrictions. Previous to this, in APA 6, it was required to use Times New Roman font. Now you can use any professional, easy to read font. This includes fonts such as Calibri, Arial, Verdana, and the like. On the title page of your assignment, the title will be written in bold with an extra space underneath. This is a new change for APA 7. Um, previously, it was not required to have bold or the extra space, and so this is a small difference that you'll want to note. All of these document formatting changes can be seen in the sample essay on our APA guide, which I'll also point out when we get to the guide. Here are some changes as they relate to in-text citations for APA 7. If you have a source that has more than two authors, so that has three or more authors, you're going to use et al immediately. Et al is the abbreviation that means and everyone, which can be included in in-text citations after the name of the first author. This allows us to save a bit of space when we're writing in-text citations. If you're using a source, and there's a quote inside that source that you want to use, that's called an indirect source or a secondary source. When it comes to these quotes within another source, we're going to want to include both the date of the primary source, the original source, and also the date for the source that you read the quote in. This means that there will be actually two dates inside this citation. It's important when doing a secondary source to very clearly indicate who is the original author and who is the source that you read the quote in, the secondary author. So for example, in order to clarify this, we're going to put as cited in with the second source. For in-text citations of images, it's no longer necessary to put a full note in student work. This is one of those changes that applies only to student work. 
So if you're doing an assignment or a PowerPoint, then this change will apply. If you're doing a professional manuscript, journal article, or other professional published work, you're going to still write a full note. But for student assignments and for PowerPoints, it's now acceptable for images to just include the author and the date as an in-text citation rather than writing a full note. So this will make things a little bit simpler if you're citing images in your student work. There are also a few changes to the references list and how references are written in APA 7. If you have a source that has many authors, you're going to list up to the first 20 authors before using an ellipsis or the dot, dot, dot to indicate that you're skipping authors' names. If, for example, I had 24 authors, I would put the first 20, then an ellipsis, and then skip to the final author in my reference. If your source is an online source, such as a website that has a hyperlink, it's okay to leave the hyperlink as linked. You don't have to remove the hyperlinks anymore. If you're planning on using hyperlinks in your references, we recommend being consistent and including hyperlinks for all the relevant sources or for none of them, just making sure to be consistent as to whether or not you're using hyperlinks at all. If your source is a scholarly article, it might have a DOI number. DOI numbers are now to be written as hyperlinks. This is a change from the previous version of APA. If your article is a scholarly article but does not have a DOI, you don't have to include a database link for this article. It's not necessary to include any information in terms of location of that article on the internet if it's easily available in a database. An additional change regarding online resources such as websites and online news articles is it's no longer necessary to put the words retrieved from before the URL. This information can be omitted and you can go straight to writing the URL. If you have a book, a physical paper book, or an ebook, it's no longer necessary to include the location of the publisher. So the city and the state, province, or country is not required to be written anymore. If you have an ebook specifically, it is now required to include the publisher's name just like we do for print books. This information will come before the URL. For websites, you're going to include the name of the larger site in cases where the site is authored by individuals or a group of individuals. What this means is that you'll include the names of the authors at the beginning, but after the title, we're going to put the name of the larger group or corporation or institution that is involved with putting that information on the web. Let's turn now to look at some library resources for APA version 7. The print guide for APA that we recommend for student use is the Concise Guide to APA Style. This is a brief version of the full APA guide, and it's designed specifically for student writing for assignments and PowerPoints. This guide will be the replacement for the Clearly APA book, which was used for APA 6. As of the day of recording, access for students for this book is still being determined. Please get in touch with the bookstore if you're looking to purchase a copy of this book. The library hopes to have this book available to borrow if possible. The library also has a new APA online guide available for APA 7. This guide is similar to our APA 6 guide with a few style changes made in order for greater accessibility and clarity. In this guide, you'll find many examples for how to cite and how to reference and how to do in-text citations for your sources. I will do a brief demonstration of the guide.
As you can see, the guide contains several sections which are laid out on the left side of the page. The first few sections are focused on formatting and the changes from APA 6 to APA 7. We also have sections on in-text citations, references, and some assignment examples for specifically English 2550 and 2510. Hopefully more courses are coming. If you scroll down on the main page, you'll find the APA online course. This course will be discussed here briefly. If I click on the tab for APA 6 versus 7, you'll find a list of changes pertaining to the switch to APA 7 with visual examples. If you're a returning student or you've been using APA 6 and you want to know some of the differences, this is a good place to look. If you go where it says format, this will include formatting instructions for specific parts of the essay or assignment that you're writing. So for example, we have a tips and checklist document which lists all of the formatting requirements for APA. We also have a sample paper that you can edit in Microsoft Word, sample PowerPoint slides, which you can view as a guide or a reference for how to do APA in a PowerPoint, and then we also have instructions for sometimes uh, more unusual requests, like how to write an abstract, a heading, or to do an appendix. Under the Style tab, this is where APA discusses some of the stylistic concerns of writing. So this is in terms of things like inclusive and bias-free language, writing about people with disabilities, using preferred pronouns, and also how to reference Indigenous elders and knowledge keepers and other traditional information. The in-text citations tab gives examples for how to do different types of in-text citations. You'll notice on the side there's a jump to list and this lets us skip directly to the parts of this page that we might like to visit. For example, if I want to cite an image, I'll click on images and it will give me examples for how to write an image and then also specifics for several different types of images. For example, if my image is a photograph taken from a website, I can see this example which shows me how to write an in-text citation for this referenced image. For the References tab, if you're on a desktop or laptop and you hover over, you'll see that there's a drop-down list. If you're on a mobile device, just click on the References tab and it will expand this list automatically. These are the different types of sources I might want to reference, or if I'm not quite seeing what I'm looking for here, I can also go down to Jump To, and they've been broken down into a few more categories. For example, if I want to cite a magazine, it takes me to the examples for magazines and then I can open up the one that's most relevant to me and see a sample. The samples are written in two different ways. There's a general format example, which gives the rough formatting of the reference or there's correct samples of specific types. So depending on what type of source you're working with, there are different examples that can help you to write your own reference based on these examples. Last but not least, there is a specific page for help with English 2510 and 2550 assignments with some samples. This is a very popular course. The assignments and the samples are included on this page to help you get a handle on the formatting and the layout for these assignments. Please feel free to consult them if relevant to you. An APA online course is also available freely on the web to all NorQuest students and staff. The APA online course has been updated to version 7. 
It covers in four parts the essentials of APA style. This course is able to be accessed online or if you're an instructor and are interested in embedding this in your Moodle course, that can also be done. In order to view the course, you can visit the APA guide or the link to the first part has been included here. The APA online course gives a very solid overview of the basics of APA style and is very useful for new APA users. Last but not least, if you need help with APA, the Northwest librarians are here to help. We offer support with learning APA style, including how to reference, how to cite, how to paraphrase, and how to proofread your own work for APA. Please note, we are not able to proofread student work on your behalf, but we are happy to teach proofreading skills. If you want to get in touch with a librarian, please email library at norquest.ca or feel free to chat with us online on the library website during our regular business hours. Thank you for watching this webinar. Please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions about APA style and have a good day.